Hey, what's up guys? It's Danny, I'm back with a uh, new series this time. Uh, something I'm calling Tales from the Thrift. I actually got the idea uh, to do a series like this from LGR, or Lazy Game Reviews. Check him out. I will link his YouTube channel below. He's got over a million subscribers. I'm sure I'm not really helping him out by linking that, but hey, if you haven't seen him, if you've never heard of him, he's a lot like me. He's, he, well, he's actually more geeky than I am, I would have to say. But uh, he likes some of the old stuff that I like, you know, old computers, old tech, stuff like that. And he goes to thrift stores and finds them. And uh, I've been doing the same thing, but not to the level that he's doing it. So um, as you know, I got those uh, those sunglasses that have a built in camera. That's why I got them. That's what he does. If he doesn't use his phone, most of the time he goes into these stores with sunglasses on with a camera and does LGR thrift reviews or thrift. LGR thrifts is what it's called. And uh, that's what he uses to discreetly record. And uh, it's a brilliant idea. And uh, I'm not trying to copy him, but I, that is what I'm doing technically. Um, but I'm making my own series. His is called LGR thrifts. Mine's called Tales from the Thrift, uh, which a name I thought of in the car on the way to Goodwill. So I was pretty stoked that uh, I thought of that name. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, so without further ado, this is Tales from the Thrift. Um, I will be doing voiceovers, so you won't really hear much audio at all. Not like the audio is that great with the camera sunglasses, um, but uh, video is amazing. And uh, do pardon my very noobish filming. I forgot half the time that I should probably hold the product up higher, so I, in editing, yelled at myself a lot because I was looking at the product in real life, but it was out of frame. So there's one thing in particular that I did buy that I'll just show you guys um, in better view than what I shot with the sunglasses. <laughs> I'm a noob. I'm, I'll get better at this as time goes on. Uh, and if you like this series, I'll definitely continue it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun making it. Now, I do have to mention that I won't be making them every week. It'll probably be every two weeks just because, you know, thrift stores like Goodwill and City Thrift, they have a schedule. And uh, I don't want to keep going back and finding the exact same stuff. So it's going to be a new series, but it won't be every week. It'll probably be every two, maybe every three weeks. Sometimes a month. I, I know LGR, he goes a few months and I'm making another thrift video. Just because we're waiting on the cycles of Goodwill and City Thrift and, and Savers and everybody else to bring in new products. So uh, with that being said, again, I apologize for, for some of the um, footage uh, just because the stuff I pick up is out of frame in a couple of instances. Um, I will work on that next time I'm filming, <laughs> obviously. You get caught up in in what you're seeing in the thrift store sometimes you forget that you're recording so which happened to me more than once but without further ado here's tales from the thrift episode one pilot all right so our very first stop is at savers savers is a thrift store but it's kind of expensive because i think they're also a chain but uh, i don't know if they're non-profit like goodwill and, and city thrift but anyway a little bit expensive anyway walking in uh, a bunch of junk as you can see keep going and a lot of stuff lots and lots and lots to look at i mean this is the place to go if you are starting out on your own you know you're like teenager 18 19 just moved out of mommy and daddy's house you know you come here this is where you go to get your silverware to get your cookware to get your entertainment they've got a ton of stuff here they got some blu-rays which i found interesting uh that's going the distance you can't really see that because i don't know how to aim a camera but anyway that's beside the point uh they also had heroes and nip tuck and law and order and boston legal and that horrible spider-man movie i almost picked up and bought 24 it was 3.99 i don't like 24 that much my dad does um but i've just never been a fan i think it's a cop show i think they like they have this this is the show that goes beep 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 between episode or commercial breaks and it drives me insane also rush hour 2 my favorite movie growing up as a kid aside from the matrix um it was also 399 in fact they were all everything here 399 which i don't know seems like kind of a ripoff for some of those movies anyway moving forward we've got 
bunch of beauty products and some old pictures that nobody wants. You know, you'd see like an old hotel or something. Hotel? That's not a word. Hotel. Um, oh, and just so you know, this is like one take. So if I say, mm, um, and stumble over my words, well, you know, that's just me being me. Raw Danny. Danny in the raw, you know. So... A bunch of religious books, uh, Bibles. I was looking for Scientology stuff. That's another thing I'm looking for with these uh, thrift videos. Old tech, Scientology, propaganda, all that stuff, you know. Uh, definitely not a Scientologist. If you're new here, I am far from it. I'm actually on the opposite team. I don't like Scientology. I know it's a cult. I know it's a scam. And I'm sorry if you're a Scientologist and you were offended. Uh, just calling it like it is. No, no offense. Well, I guess some offense. Whatever. Oh, remember Kevin, 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 remember Kevin Trudeau? He, uh, he's a con artist. He's in prison right now for conning people out of money with his books. Chumba Wumba. I think I know that band. It seemed familiar. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of looking around. A lot of cookbooks. Lots of cookbooks. And I will say, Savers book prices are not as good as Goodwill. They'd be charging a lot of money. I saw this, how to fix damn near everything. I thought that was interesting. I didn't pick it up, though, because they wanted, like, three, four bucks for it or something like that. It's too much. You can get it for, like, two fifty at Goodwill if you can find it. Goodwill has a price for everything just standard, you know, so I prefer that over Savers. Up here, we've got a brand new sealed copy of Silence of the Lambs. I wish I had pointed my face down further so you could see the rest of it, but it's sealed brand new. And they wanted $10. $10 for it. I don't know if it's because it's sealed or what. But I was... Your boy was not about to pay $10. I'm sorry if my voice is cutting out. It's kind of getting raspy. I should probably get some something to drink. But, you know. It's 3 in the morning, and I'm doing a voiceover. A bunch of tapes. I looked at that NBA Live, I believe it was, NBA Live 95 for <clears throat> Super Nintendo. I almost got it, decided not to. Uh, they also had a box copy of Halo for PC, except you can't see it because I don't know how to point a camera, but inside there was no game, just a manual. So they were selling you a copy of Halo without the copy of Halo, which means somebody came by and stole it. That's that's what people do, unfortunately. It's just a thing. A Zoo Tycoon 2 didn't care. Some preschool game I didn't care about. A couple of Nintendo DS games that didn't matter. I almost dropped Halo on my head. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't care about any of that stuff. But still, you know, somewhat interesting anyway. Magazines. Bunch of PS2 games. Just blah, blah, blah. Yep. Not a lot in their software. Not a lot. Uh, and then over here we've got some records. We've got some... So I almost bought this. This is Success Self-Programming <laughs> Book from some lady from the 80s. It's on, you know, it's on two uh, tapes, but it's like four sides, and it was... I almost bought it. It was $2. But then I got to thinking, am I really going to pull out a tape player and listen to her talk? Probably not. So I didn't get it. It was funny, though. I didn't get it, though. I'm still debating, as you can tell. I'm like, yeah, do I really need this? And no. Do I really need anything? No, not really. But, you know, I like stuff. And then this is Michael Crichton timeline. I didn't know what that was, so I just put it back. And then right next to the tapes, uh, we have the 8-track section. The small 8-track section. These are quite common to find in thrift stores. So it's not like I struck gold or anything. I'm just kind of going through here to see what there is. I mean, it's funny how people used to listen to, you know, media on something like that. Some plastic piece. But hey, it's different times, different times. I ended up carrying that NBA Live 95 game for a while because I thought I was going to buy it. Then I changed my mind later on. So and we're now over in the toy section and... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for PC games that they sometimes put in the toy section. I learned that from LGR, by the way. Total credit to him. Uh, but they didn't do that here. They had literal, literal games. And, 
Yeah, it was alright, but there was nothing that really caught my eye. Um, Tripoli, Taboo, Battleship, Monopoly, you know, just, just classics, you know. I already either have all these or don't want them. Believe it or not, though, I do own some board games. Surprising, I know. Over here is their little electronics section. They were selling these TVs for far too high because they're not worth it because they're old. Uh, they were having 50% off furniture today, they said, but I believe that side is always up, so who knows. Uh, over here is a 7.1 surround sound that I didn't care about. Got a couple keyboards over here. I picked up that one in the middle is, is a uh, Lenovo keyboard. A little too new for my liking. I like the classic keyboards. Uh, or if it had been a gaming keyboard, I would have been interested, but they were just basic. And then there's a combat one I didn't even touch because it looked so filthy. Uh, over here, we've got a TV tray looking thing. We got an old Canon printer. Some more old speakers, old stuff I didn't care about. Over here, we've got cables and controllers. And I picked up this controller right over here. I'm picking up right now. No idea what that is. I don't know if that's Dreamcast or is this just some generic controller for something. I didn't know. It sparked my interest for two seconds and I saw the PlayStation 1 controller without DualShock and then PS2 controllers with DualShock. Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing crazy over here. Lots and lots of junk, as you can see, though. Lots and lots of junk. All right, now we're going back through the toys again. I just, I go through these one more time to make sure there's nothing, you know, hidden. And uh, yeah, nothing really caught my eye. I did see that uh, quantum thing, notebook thing from Leapfrog, and I was like, eh, kept going. Kept going. Nothing, no, not really any old toys, just kind of toys that don't care about. I mean, there's a few old toys, but nothing crazy. Uh, nothing that stuck out. You know, I look for like Transformers, stuff like that, stuff from the 80s, early 90s. That I grew up with, that nothing's there, it's been picked. Uh, I did find a pink Camaro though. Found that to be interesting for $2. Nah. And then over here, we've got a bunch of clocks, which I do like. I like clocks, little lamps, stuff like that. I did find this weird looking thing. I'm about to pick it up here in a second. Come on, Danny, look back up. There it is. Don't know what it is. Uh, it was filled with like some yellow water substance thing and it turned so i said let's go try it out i was looking for somewhere to plug it in so you could see if it would actually work uh i ended up going back over to the other side of the store and plugging it in over here and uh so i plug it in and it, you can hear a motor inside turn on and this thing is it's like a bubbler um, and it when it was new it looked like it was supposed to um to rotate and so I, I kind of give it a little bit of help to see if it'll just start rotating and it starts but then it stops and it was very cool I like this 90s kind of art work because it's weird it's abstract it reminds me of you know just the pop culture of the 90s and I almost bought it but it just it would not turn by itself it would start to and then it would just stop and you can see it bubbling and it's trying to turn and it just wouldn't it just it was too bad too because I really wanted to buy it but I'm not going to buy something that needs work and I don't know how to fix that so yeah poor little thing it's too bad very cool piece of art though I don't I don't know exactly I don't know I don't even know if it lit up it, it may have lit up at one point I don't know but I thought it was cool it would have been nice to see it working but you know I'm still over here trying to get it to work I didn't want to give up on it but eventually I had to um I was impressed that it at least turned on when I plugged it in, so there's that. It was pretty cool. Again, I don't know if it's a clock or what, or if it's just a bubbler that's supposed to bubble as like a conversation piece or what, but yeah. And then I found this clock that looked like an iMac, which I thought was pretty hilarious, but it's just cheaply made. I, I didn't care, so I didn't, I didn't pick it up. All right, well... Savers was a bust, so it's time to go on to the next thrift store, number two out of three. We head there now. This is a new thrift store that used to be an Office Depot. Uh, well, an Office Depot used to be in this building, is what I'm trying to say. And they moved out. City Thrift moved in. City Thrift is owned by City Union Mission of Kansas City. Uh, so you know, Christian based. Uh, they like to help people. What in the world is this lady wearing? I don't know, but. Her back was fully exposed. I, don't get me wrong. It's 90 degrees out. I understand people get hot. Uh, and then there's an exercise bike. 
So, but I wouldn't wear something like that to the thrift store. It's just me. Uh, anyway, moving on. So I'm in the books aisle, and they have VHS tapes as well. Uh, I was just looking through. I didn't see anything. There's Titanic, but again, I really don't pick up VHS tapes unless it's a certain something. It would have to be something like, you know, Silence of the Lambs that was wrapped up new. Here's Sims 2, which you can't hardly see because I don't know how to point a camera again. Uh, they only had disc 2 inside. There was no disc 1, so I was not about to buy that. And then down here, there was a bunch of reel-to-reel -reel blank uh, reel tapes, or magnetic tapes, from Scotch. And uh, they had a pile of them brand new still in the shrink wrap, but they wanted $7 a piece. And I'm like, nope, not worth that. At least not to me. I, I feel like that would be too high, but maybe I'm wrong. I know they don't exactly make reel-to-reel -reel tapes anymore, but still, I mean, jeez. And then there is this Kodak-looking vintage camera, but somebody had stolen it, so it was just an empty box, unfortunately, because I would have totally bought that, had it been in good condition anyway. I love collecting old cameras. Over here, we got more 8-tracks, and I'm just kind of going through it. Nothing really of interest. They had Nat King Cole and a few others, but it's just like, this is music I don't listen to. I... If I'm looking for an 8-track, I'm looking for, like, Michael Jackson or Jackson 5 or Motown or something like that, you know. And then language software. Five bucks. Eh, didn't care. Walking over here up next to the vending machines. There's an HP monitor. Uh, from 2007, around that time, I remember because I had a monitor just like that. They were asking $25 for it, which I think is far too high because it's just a regular monitor. You can find that exact same monitor on Craigslist for like five bucks. You know, flat panel monitors don't mean anything anymore. Here's another eight track uh, cassette box. Is that what you call them? Eight track cassettes or just eight tracks? Anyway, there's a box for it. Over here, just walking through. I'm just amazed at all the stuff that City Union Mission has in their city thrift store. I actually like the city thrift store probably the most out of all of the thrift stores. Just a lot of variety. There's a lot of stuff to look at, and their prices aren't crazy. Now, they had a few things that were, I thought, overpriced, like they had a PS1 for like 30 bucks, PS2 for like 40, a Wii for 60. I'm like, no. So I found uh, the electronics section, and boy, was it overwhelming. There's so much to look at. We'll come back to that typewriter here in a second. I was just looking at all the cameras they had. I was looking at this. I thought this was an 8-track player, but it turned out to be a 6-disc CD changer. So after I realized what it was, I was like, eh, don't care about that. So just kind of looking around. They got all kinds of TVs coming back over here. They got printers, VCRs, DVD players, more printers. This is junk that I don't want. Maybe somebody does. They got old monitors. I'm sure they're not cheap. Um, but I just, nah, none of this really appealed. This keyboard or this uh, typewriter was cool. Um, pressed on the buttons and it, it was seized up. It just, it, it needed work. This compact was selling for $34 as is, which means no hard drive, no RAM. Why Why would anybody pay $35 for a PC that doesn't even function? It needs basic parts to function. I don't know. Had it been like five bucks, I'd have bought it and, you know, flipped it, obviously. Put the parts it needs in there and I would have sold it for a profit. That's what I do. Kind of looking at some more stuff, just more junk, a lot of VCRs, a lot of audio equipment nobody cares about anymore just a lot of stuff I, I figured somebody buys all this stuff eventually you know or it goes to landfill I don't know just yeah I was just kind of looking around I, I've always had an interest with credit card readers and so I'm looking at one right now which you can't really see because I'm again out of frame $5.99 I thought about it and, uh, and then I saw another one actually you know what Actually, it's not a word, but um, the, whatever this thing, I forget what this was. It was like, a, I think it was a message recorder. It was wood grain. It caught my attention for a second, but I was like, nah. Looking at a different uh, credit card machine and yeah, just kind of comparing the two. Looking to see what I'm, okay, well, guys, what I'm really looking for right now is Apple products. I found one here last time, but they wanted 80 bucks and all it was was toner for the image, for the image writer too, which I actually own. But I was not going to pay 80 bucks for it. It was new in box. 80 bucks though? No thanks. So yeah, I'm just comparing the two. I ended up not getting either one. 
but uh, yeah. All right, I see this little night light alarm clock thing for kids. It, they won 11 bucks for it, and I thought it was too crusty for that, so I didn't buy it. More keyboards, nothing vintage, nothing, you know, of worth, in my opinion. I had There was vintage-looking stuff, but nah. All right, back over here. Kind of going through this part. I see a Route 66 sign. Um, and it says, get your kicks in Route 66, or at Route 66, or whatever. Yeah, it's pretty cool, but not for $11. So I was like, eh, don't need it. Or $10.98, yeah, might as well be 11 I was like, nah, it's cool, but it ain't that cool. You know. Kind of how it is. They have so much stuff to look at, though, so it's pretty crazy what you can find. Now, I did pick up this. This is a music box that you can't really see because I'm not pointing the camera the right way, but it held whiskey uh, on the left, or actually held whiskey on the right and had as a music box built in on the left. It's basically a record player, one of those old style ones, like a miniature version. And uh, here we go. I'm about to play what it sounds like real quick. I was amazed that it even still worked. Very nice. So, yeah, I keep looking at it. I ended up buying it. All right, so yeah, looking at more stuff, and they just got, you know, all kinds of decorations. I did see this. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. It was a little moped art, but it was damaged on the right side. So I was going to buy it until I saw that it was damaged. I ended up putting it back um, later on. Going through here, there's an old typewriter. Uh, they wanted $65 for it, and I was like, no, no. See, these some of these thrift stores have caught on to what people are doing and what they're you know we used to be able to get these deals for two five ten dollars but they know people collect old things old things sell you know old tech sells and they wanted 65 for that and i said no thanks and i was looking over here they had more junk i didn't care about um they also had a uh, old was it sanyo i believe yeah old sanyo calculator it was cool but they wanted eight bucks and i was like nah i don't even know if it works and I don't know how to fix it if it doesn't, so. Kind of looking around some more. Didn't see a whole lot there. So here we go. Over here, though, we've got a Russian Pepsi bottle. Your boy loves collecting old Pepsi and Coke products. And uh, to see Pepsi in Russian, you bet I picked it up. There's also a Polaroid Minute Maker camera from looks like the 70s, maybe the 60s. It's got that brown look, so it could be from the 70s. I thought about it, but they wanted 12 bucks, and I, I was not willing to pay $12 for something I didn't really care about that much. Also, I guess Furbies are now considered vintage. I don't know why, but they were wanting, uh, I think, $11 a piece, something like that. And I was like, nope. Old uh, Eagle Lamp, so... Um, that Coke bottle, or that, that Pepsi bottle, I should say, I got that's uh, from Russia as we drive to the new place, the Goodwill. I didn't finish my story. Um, it was $11. They, it looked like it said 98 cents, but it was 10.98. Anyway, I bought it anyway. So it was the most expensive thing I bought uh, this time. But yes, now we're driving up to the, or actually we already drove up to the Goodwill. We are now walking in the Goodwill. This Goodwill has been here for a decade at least. It's old, but it's faithful. I usually find some good stuff in here. So here we go. Right off the bat, in the back, the first thing I see is an Electronics Boutique Tempest joystick for Mac and IBM computers. It looks like it's from the late 80s, early 90s. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but because I am so bad at filming what I'm picking up today, because I'm new at this, I'm going to go ahead and have a separate clip right here inserted uh, where you can see a better look at the Tempest joystick. All right, so this is one of those instances where I didn't show the product as good as I could have. Uh, what I picked up was the Tempest from Electronics Boutique back in the day is what they were called. They were then called EB Games. That's what EB stood for in EB Games, Electronics Boutique. So technically their name was Electronics Boutique Games. But uh, 
yeah, let me just show you. This is for IBM and Apple. It's a very old joystick, and it was in decent shape. I'm probably never going to use it, but I do like collecting old tech, as you know. That's part of the series. So, keeping the box, definitely. Uh, it's got the manual inside, the original manual as well. I'll pull that out because that's just a piece of paper, really. But uh, yeah, there it is. There's the Tempest joystick. And it's pretty solid. Pretty solid. It snaps right back into place. It looks like it was used, but gently used. Like, it's, it's not bad. So, I would say probably early 90s, maybe late 80s, I don't know. But it is Electronics Boutique branded which is very cool. I did not know that just now. So, EB Games actually made a product and they made this, uh, this cool little Tempest joystick. So, there you go, that's a better view, so. And then, I don't know why this is in the kids section, but Dirty Minds, the board game. Found that interesting, I don't know why it would be in the kids section, but there you go. More stuff, a lot of bags, I'm near the electronics, I'm in the electronics now. Um, more junk, a lot of DVD players, a lot of satellite TV boxes, uh, yeah, just lots, lots of stuff that people just get rid of these days, as they should, I mean, we're getting newer and newer tech every day, it surprises me, though, when I, uh, see some things in these, like a Blu-ray player, for instance, I remember when Blu-ray players were $200, you know, back when I worked at Target, and it's weird seeing them now for, like, 10 ducks, 10, 10 ducks, no, 10 bucks, at thrift stores and then this right here is a fake neon cactus light it works uh, they sell them at Target so I know where that came from it's like five bucks at Target it's five bucks here so take your pick you want a new or used one that's five bucks either way it seems like old APC nothing to worry about back over to the books I always skim through these one more time to make sure I don't miss something and in this case I actually did miss something I missed two things one being that nursing book on how to be a nurse it's got the, <laughs> it's got the answers and questions uh, in the book and I just find it interesting and you know for a buck 50 I said why not that's a really thick book to, to glance at and see what all they have to study There's a lot going on in that book so yeah I thought about putting it back I was like you know what now nah, get it I'll go ahead and get it. it's a buck 50 and then I also found Gerald's Game. I saw the movie last year, and uh, this is the book based off the movie, or um, the movie's based off the book, and I'm pretty sure the book's probably better. So I went, went ahead and ended up getting that as well. And the guy who checked me out gave, went ahead and gave me a deal on both books, um, 99 cents each. He was, uh, he was feeling generous, he said, so that's what I got. And just to recap one final time, I got the... Uh, Russian Pepsi bottle from 1981. The little music box that held some sort of whiskey um, and played uh, the We're Here Because We're Here New Year's Eve Day whatever song that people sing when it's the New Year. The Tempest from EB Games. Very nice. I got the RN Adult Medical Surgical Nursing Surgical Nursing Edition 9.0 from Content Mastery Series. A lot of information. A lot of uh, right and wrong answers on what to do in the medical field um, Got it for 99 cents shout out to the guy at uh, Goodwill he gave me a deal on both these he charged me 99 cents instead of the full 250 uh, Per book so he said he was feeling nice and then uh, Obviously the last and most favorite book I got from there so far is Stephen King's Gerald's game amazing movie I saw it with the next last year um, I can only imagine the book is probably just as good, probably better. Uh, loved that movie. is very, very freaky, and I imagine the book is uh, no different. So, yeah. Not bad for a first haul. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you appreciate and enjoyed this video, and I hope you liked the series. And uh, until next time, see you all. Have a great day.